So many people are pursuing happiness in so many ways. Most people are seeking happiness in the form of situations and circumstances, in the acquisition of wealth or prestige, or in relationships, or in pleasurable experiences, or in some kind of achievement, and so on. There are so many ways, so many things that we do in order to be happy, and yet oftentimes we tend not to be happy, or at least it doesn't last for very long. Many people find that even having achieved whatever it was that they thought would make them happy, it turns out that it doesn't. And in some cases, they might feel more miserable than before. Tenzin Palmo points out that one of the advantages of being born in an affluent society is that it gives us the opportunity to see that no amount of wealth or status can make a person happy. Or you may recall hearing Jim Carrey once say that he wished that everyone could be rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of just so they could see that it's not the answer. But it's not just that these things don't fulfill us, it's the pursuit itself. It's the idea that happiness is something you have to pursue. And the whole idea of pursuing something is based on the belief that it's not already available to you right here and now. Just by thinking that happiness is something that you have to pursue, you're creating this distance. You're projecting it out into the future. You're putting it in some other place, some other time in some other situation, somewhere out of reach. In order to pursue something, it has to be out of reach. And as long as we're pursuing happiness, it's always just out of reach. It's like a wild animal that the more you chase it, the more it retreats from you. That's the nature of pursuit. And we set up all kinds of conditions that have to be met in order to be happy. I'll be happy when this condition is fulfilled, when I achieve this, when I acquire that, when the circumstances are just so, then I'll be happy. Which means, in the meantime, you refuse to be happy. Until those conditions are fulfilled, I won't be happy. I refuse. Not until my demands are met. So in this way, we're determined to be unhappy until everything goes our way, until everything is just so. But perhaps you've heard all of this before. At least you've probably heard that happiness isn't to be found outside of yourself, that it can only be found within. And maybe you're tired of hearing that because as nice as it sounds, it just doesn't seem to be the case for you. If happiness is already within me, then why don't I feel it? If happiness doesn't depend on anything outside of me, then why am I not happy? And these are valid questions. These are actually very good questions. We should be asking ourselves these kinds of questions. We should ask ourselves, why am I unhappy? Because if you really go into it, you'll begin to see that you do have certain ideas, certain beliefs, certain expectations, which are the cause of your unhappiness. You might hear that happiness does not depend on outward circumstances, and you might even find that idea agreeable. You see how there are people who seem to have everything, everything except for happiness. 
And you may have seen people who have very little in life, whose circumstances seem quite unfortunate. And yet they seem to be quite happy, nonetheless. Or you've seen in your own life how acquiring things that you thought would make you happy didn't really fulfill you. And so it seems to make a great deal of sense that happiness doesn't come from outside. But when we look more deeply at our own unhappiness, we may find that we're still holding some belief that in order to be happy, we need something from outside. We need something outside of ourselves to be different. If you really go into it and ask yourself, why am I unhappy? The answer is generally going to have something to do with your circumstances. I'm unhappy because I don't have this or that. And what that infers is that you think that in order to be happy, you need something. A change in circumstances, more money, a romantic partner, or maybe a different romantic partner, or whatever it happens to be. Now, if happiness is something that can only be found within, and which is not dependent upon circumstances, then so long as we're pursuing it, seeking it, chasing it, we're pushing it away from us. Or at the very least, our attention is oriented in the wrong direction, because we're looking for it somewhere out there. Even if we're not actively pursuing it, even if we're just passively wallowing in our misery, there's still this sense that the reason we're miserable is because happiness is out there somewhere else, in some other circumstance. Even though we may not be doing anything at all to try and attain it, we're still projecting it elsewhere. Now it may be that there are things about your circumstances that would be worth changing. There may be things that are harmful to you, or it may be that there are aspects which make your life much more stressful and complicated than it has to be. And I'm not suggesting that you don't try to improve the situation. All I'm saying is that it's not going to make you happy. There are plenty of people whose circumstances are quite comfortable who are nonetheless unhappy. Most people are, at the very least, dissatisfied with their lives. A great deal of that dissatisfaction comes simply from not appreciating what you have. Instead, we're always looking at what seems to be missing. And those who fail to appreciate what they have will never be happy. Or as Tara Brock puts it, happiness lies not in finding what is missing, but in finding what is present. In other words, shifting our attention to what is right in front of us, looking at your current circumstances, not in order to find out what is wrong, but to find out what is right. So we turn our attention to what is favorable about our situation, what is fortunate about it, focusing our attention on what we have and really taking time to appreciate it. Sometimes what can be helpful is to just find one thing that is good about your situation and to imagine what it would be like not to have it. And then to think about how fortunate it is that you do. The fact is that we can always find imperfections. We can always find something to complain about. No matter what we have, we could always have more. There's always the possibility of more. There's really no end to it. So even if you could have everything you've ever wanted, if your habit is to look for flaws and imperfections or to focus on what you don't have, then whatever situation you find yourself in, that's what you'll do. You won't be satisfied under any circumstance, no matter how fortunate it is. 
no matter how good you have it, if it's your habit to complain, you'll always find something to complain about. So it's not so much about what you have or don't have, it's more about your own way of thinking. It's often said that it isn't the situation which causes us to be unhappy, so much as it's our thoughts about the situation. It's our failure to simply appreciate what we have and to always look for something to complain about. And I wonder if we can just let go entirely of our seeking to be happy. And I'm not saying that you collapse into some kind of depression. Because even in depression, there is this wanting to be happy. There is this idea that if things were different, I would be happy. But if we could let go of the idea that happiness depends on circumstances being some particular way, then perhaps happiness could arise in that space. If we took away all the conditions, which are really restrictions, then maybe happiness could arise in us. But as long as we need a reason to be happy, we'll continue to find so many reasons not to be. But how do we give up this seeking for happiness? How do we give up the pursuit? It's not such an easy thing. It's in our conditioning. It's our habit. We do it oftentimes unconsciously. So first of all, I would say, be aware of it. And notice how so much of what you do is driven by this desire to be happy. Notice how behind most of your desires is this one single desire, which is to be happy. And then I would say, don't pursue happiness. Don't make happiness the goal. Redirect your focus, redirect your attention, redirect your aim. Instead, make it your aim to appreciate what you have in life and also to accept the difficulties in life, especially those things which you cannot change. Instead of complaining, change what you can change and accept what you cannot change and take time to appreciate the fortunate aspects of your life, no matter how small. And if you just do that, happiness will arise all on its own, naturally and effortlessly. Because the fact is that happiness is already available within you. It's just that there's so much standing in the way of it, obstructing it, blocking it. So to access that happiness, you don't have to add something or acquire anything. You have to get rid of something. You have to remove those obstructions. So what is it that is standing in the way of your happiness? Is it your desires and expectations? Is it your attachments? Is it your refusal to accept things as they are? Is it your inability to appreciate what you have? Is it your beliefs about happiness, about what you think is required in order to be happy? What you think you have to do in order to be happy? Or the belief that happiness is something to be pursued, something to be sought after, something to be acquired, something that will come from having acquired some object or experience or having achieved something. And when you look at this within yourself, when you really examine these things, you begin to see how they're actually creating suffering. They're actually causing you to feel unhappy. As long as you're wanting something to make you happy, that wanting is causing you to feel unhappy. 
And as long as you're pursuing happiness, you aren't open to experiencing it right here in the present moment.